As a child, her favourite make-believe game was to pretend she was the host of a cooking show. <laughs> she grew up and made a career in food, and yes, yeah, she got that TV show, the food travel series World Kitchen. There are two leakies in this conversation. Novel author Leaky Pellegrillo is talking with food writer Leaky Wakes about her new book, Acquired Kitchen, and the Ferris Tens Book Town event. It sort of came out of lockdown, really, where I was doing all of these videos during lockdown of what I was cooking for dinner to help other people out. And a lot of people asked me to put them in a recipe book. But I was more interested in writing a book sort of about life in general, and I wanted to have some recipes that were for one. But I also wanted to talk about what it's like to live as one. A solo, you know, I don't have any children and I'm not married and never have been, so I thought that that was worthy of a topic for a book. Hence the name of the book, Acquired Kitchen, about cooking meals for one. When I think about recipes and recipe writing, which is what I do for a job, I want to make sure that people are not um, frightened of the ingredients, that they probably have them in their pantry, that we don't need all these exotic ingredients to make really beautiful food. And I think that if people are more likely to have the ingredients in the house, then they'll make that recipe again and again. And my recipes also don't involve a lot of skill. You just have to know how to chop and stir and bake. It's not anything too, too kind of fussy, because I don't like fussy cooking. Inspired by the feedback from readers, Wake's really has a plan for her next book. I want to write another book that is along the same lines and how do we live a good life? Even when life has its challenges like depression or breakups or ill health or whatever, if food can kind of stitch all of that together and it can really kind of nourish and comfort us. So I think I'd like to write more of that. The other Nikki, Nikki Play Grillo, has written a series of novels based in Italy about food, friendship, and love. I didn't think I was going to write 14 books set in Italy. With with my first one, I, I was really inspired by my memories of Italy as a kid. So we used to go over and stay with my dad's family and they lived um, just north of Napoli. And my aunts were amazing cooks. And all of that was what was in my head. And I wrote my first book, Delicious. And what I didn't realize is if you write a book that has any success at all, publishers want you to write more of the same kind of thing. Pelle Grillo traveled back to Italy in August to explore more places and meet more people. I went to Puglia in the south of Italy for a research trip, which just really involves exploring and eating and meeting people. And it's fantastic to have that. And then next year's book to come to Italy is set in a town called Ostuni in Puglia, which is this beautiful white town on a hill. And I completely love it there. And I went for just like a day once and thought I've got to come back here. It's been fantastic this year that more things have been happening. And it's really great to get out and meet people who read your books because writing is a really solitary pursuit. Back in Featherstone, the one hour talk between the two Lickies attracted over 70 book lovers who came away enthused by the subjects. I love different kinds of foods and, and but healthy eating and things like that. So yeah, I came along to have a have a look at the beautiful authors, Nikki Peregrino. She's got the book about uh, I Dream of Italy, and my husband and I are actually going there next year. So I thought it would be great to grab that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do some homework. For exactly, us. exactly. Yeah, no, it's going to be fun. I'm just really keen to read it, and I've actually had difficulty finding it in bookstores. It seems to be very popular. My daughter. Um, has it and she was given it by a single woman friend then my daughter loved it so much she then bought it for another of her single women friends just really loved the concept of it so uh, that's why i was interested to purchase it meanwhile a glorious artisan food fair was also taking place in the same hall today we've got our annual uh, food author related event for Featherstone Book Town. This is our third year. We've got 18 store holders all together, most of them are food focused local producers, but we've also got our booksellers of course, because you know, we want to be Book Town without books. Uh, so we've got our local bookstore Chicken and Frog, uh, and we've also got Lavender's Green selling cookbooks, um, but otherwise we've got local producers like Vixen Burger, 
um, Great Aunt Honey, uh, Nadita Ceramics, Be Happy Chocolate, Mellow Juice, the list goes on, olive oil, olive oil. It's just a wonderful opportunity to show the visitors that come and remind our locals about all the amazing producers we have in the, in the Wairarapa, um, you know, and um, in these days, you know, to support local, shop local and, um, you know, create a nice community atmosphere. So we bought a couple of bowls from uh, Nadito, um, which is a local potter who lives in Martinborough. Um, and uh, we love her pottery, so um, we definitely came here to, uh, especially to see that um, and buy um, a couple of her things. Well, the great thing about this market, I think, is that we've got uh, Wairarapa local um, crafts and, and artisan products, uh, and it enables both the, the people who are making them to, to sell them and, and be successful, but also for people to see them and, and um, get access to them. The successful day had all the right ingredients, cookbooks, novels, and artisanal food gifts, all brought together and Featherstone's iconic and Zach Hall. We use this hall a lot. This is a very historic hall. It's fantastic that it gets so well used and everyone in the community loves it. So, um, and having an artisan food fair is just a perfect thing, along with some Booktown events and recipes and meet the author and it's a way, great way for the community to all, all these friends popping in and catching up including people from Australia who I haven't seen for years and just hello here they are. Jay Pang, local focus.